Welcome to this sermon from Silver Lake Baptist Church. Our mission is to celebrate the greatness of God with all we are for the joy, hope, and renewal of our community. We are so glad you have chosen to listen to our message. We pray you will be blessed by your time with us today. I was actually telling me to do something the other day. I was like, Cinderella, Cinderella. And she laughs. She goes, that actually was funny. It's not like everything else I say is funny, right? So I, I think it's funny. So, that, so that's good, right? So I love that song. We're just singing. That's just amazing, the goodness of God. And so it's funny how the Holy Spirit always wants to tie everything in if we'll just trust Him, right? And so this morning, let's, let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your peace. Thank you for your hope. But thank you for your, your goodness, your chesed, your, your, your goodness that leads us to repentance, your goodness that, that brings love and brings peace and brings hope. And so we just give you the praise in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Right? So I'm going to just go to Romans this morning. And Romans chapter 8, what is this doing up here? I accidentally brought a horseshoe with me. It was in my Bible, right? I had it. Had a, um, did you know horseshoes are in the Bible? See, I told you. It's in the Bible. I told Linda that the other day. I was like, hey, look, horseshoes are in the Bible. She goes, no, it's not in the Bible. You, you think everything's in the Bible. And I was like, no, no, horseshoes is in the Bible. I got a horseshoe in the Bible. She was like, what are you talking about? And I was like, look, it's in the Bible, right? We put a lot of things in the Bible that aren't necessarily in the Bible, too. You know what I'm talking about? We, we depend on a lot of things that we put in the Bible that's not in the Bible in the first place. And it's kind of like, what are you going to trust? What, what are you going to believe? Where is your heart go, going to go? Are you going to trust what you put in the Bible? See, I look at the horseshoe. What do you guys see when you see this? A horseshoe. A, a what? A he sees a game, right? <laughs> What is it? Does anyone else see something? See you see the letter C, yes. right? You see the letter C. Does anyone else see something? Good luck. good luck. Someone sees good luck. Does anyone else see something? Protection. What's that? Protection. Protection. Yeah, I actually pulled up to a mini mart and I had a bunch of shoes in the back of my truck and the, the owner's like, hey, can I have some horseshoes? I will pay you for them. And I'm thinking, can I have some free gas? I'll trade you. <laughs> and he did, right? And so I was like, actually, it's like, I was like, they're old, they're used. He's like, no. He's like, I'm going to paint them. And I'll come back, and he's got them up over his door, right? Because to them, it represents re really good luck, right? But you look at this, and, and um, if you hold it up, some people say that it's catching all the good luck. Then if you turn it down, some people are like, well, it's letting all the good luck out. Now it's flowing at you. No, I guess if you turn it sideways, it's hitting everybody that way. <laughs> turn it this way, it's hitting everybody that way. Like some people see a C. Like, do you guys see a C? Right? What do you see now? A backward C, a backward C right? So, so I actually have, a, it's called a bar shoe, and it's, a, and it's an oval, so it's like joined together here. So, and um, I actually put an O, I put the oval here, and then put another shoe next to it, took a picture, and I had, oh, you boomer sooner, baby. <laughs> Although they've lost their offense, someone needs to find the O in offense to, to help them out, right? And so, um, I still won. Good Lord, Jesus, I mean, help them. Someone pray. We need a prayer chain right now, okay? So, but I got, got this horseshoe. It was in my Bible. So if it's in the Bible and I believe it, then it's got to be true. Even if I put it in the Bible. I think it is in the Bible. He says our feet are shod. 
with, it, with the preparation of the gospel of what? Peace. Peace. Nothing missing, nothing broken. So it's not just about shoeing. Now, see, I look at this horseshoe a little different. What's that? It's not just as a decoration, but I use these things every week, all day long. And I put these on horses all day long. And each shoe has a different purpose. Each shoe does something different. Like some horses need, need uh, uh, this is just a plain, plain shoe, but some horses need an aventer shoe, which has a crease all the way through here. Some horses need to slide. They're reining horses, and so they're thick. They're like about this thick. And, and they're thick all the way around, and it's so when the horse gets on the dirt, it can, it can slide. Some horses need pads. Like Linda's mare, she's is, she is walking around, it went, got wet, and then it got really hard, and then when it gets wet, they put footprints in, and then it dries, and then when the horses step on it, it hurts the soles of their feet. So she's like, like uh, guess what you're doing? I was like, well, uh, whatever you told me I'm doing. And she's like, like, you're putting shoes on Willow. I was like, I am? And she's like, yes, you are. So I put shoes, but I put pads. And then I put some dental impression material, which is some soft putty, and you mix it together. It's kind of like putty. It's actually like plain, right? And you put it in the bottom, and then, then you put the pad on. And, and do you know what she can do? She can walk. Isn't that funny? She could walk before, but it was like really, she was sore. Like there was so much weight going on on the hard ground. That, that it, it hurt her and it made, it made it hard and it made, made it hard for her to walk. And so, so when I put the pads on, guess what she could do? She could walk. She could run. She could do whatever you wanted her to do because her feet were shod. The Bible talks about our feet being shod with the preparation of the gospel of what? A peace of peace. Do you know what peace means? Completeness. Nothing broken, nothing missing. You ain't broken and there ain't nothing missing in your life. In Him you have everything that you, you will ever need and it comes through one person and His name's Jesus. And Jesus. Isn't that good news? So now, just like, like, like our horse, like, like she's, got, she's got some shoes and she's shod, we call it shod. That's what it means. When you shoe a horse, you say, did you shoe your horse? Yes, your ho I shod your horse, right? Why did you sh shod my horse? What did it do to you? I mean, did you use a gun? What kind of gun did you use to shod my horse? Get it? Shot, not shod. I actually had people say, it. do that to me, believe it or not, right? But the horse is shod. So now guess what it can do? It can walk. And it can walk and do what it was designed to do. And that's what he's saying. He's shod our feet with peace, with completeness, in security, and hope. Nothing missing, nothing broken. And in that, we, ha we have a peace that will pass some understanding. What understanding? All, All understanding. A peace that passes all understanding. That means that, that we trust in the Lord with some of our heart, all of our heart, and lean not on our own understanding. Because we have a completeness. Man, I don't understand. Like, I'm messed up, but I'm still complete. God doesn't look at me as messed up. He looks at me as a son and as complete. And, and, but I ain't looking at myself that way. You see, I, I, you don't know how I think. You don't know what I do. You don't, you don't know what I'm going through. And you don't know this and you don't know that. And God's saying, no, I love you. You are perfect, just like you are. Listen to Rabbi. Um, I love him. He's amazing. He actually is the, the rabbi for Dennis Prager, who, who has Prager U, which if you ever want to learn about stuff, Prager U is phenomenal. And um, so is Dennis Prager, but um, that's not a plug, but if you like that kind of stuff, it might be. Rabbi Friedman was talking to, to some young people and, and, and talking about this young lady asking, well, how do I attract love? He says, what do you mean, how do you attract love? How do I make myself more love? 
And, and he said, so how, so like, I don't understand the question because you are loved. You don't have to make yourself loved. You already are loved by the creator of the universe. The king of the universe loves you. You don't have to do something to make someone else love you. If you have to do something to make them love you, they don't love you. They're using you. I love, I love it um, a lot because I love listening to, I feel like I've been going back to my roots a lot and listening to some of the, the rabbis. And I love listening to them, and they're great. And, and I'm finding, like, like um, there's almost like a revival going on in the hearts. But I listen to, to, um, to Rabbi, Rabbi Friedman, and, and um, he's talking about, um, for, for a lot of the Jewish people, there, there's parts of them where if you drive, especially the ascetic, if you drive on Sunday, you're unholy. Not only are you unholy, but your son's unholy. Well, watch that. And, and so, so Rabbi Friedman said, said, said they're, they're like, well, what do you say about that? And he's like, every Jew is holy. Well, how can you say that, Rabbi? Because they are made in the image and the likeness of God. They're sent to bear the message of the Torah, which is about Jesus, to the entire world. Every Jew has importance, and every Jew is loved and is holy. Not because they did something, but because God made them holy. And I was like, am I listening to, to Romans? Because it almost seems more like I'm listening to Romans than I am to, to, to this rabbi, right? You know, even like the Jewish people, like a lot of the, the, in the Jewish faith, and there's everything spiritual. Like when you walk in the door, it's spiritual. When you go to the bathroom, it's spiritual. When you put your shoes on, it's spiritual. In fact, you put your right shoe on first, then your left, but you tie your left shoe first. Everything means something. The Jewish dances, every whatever they call this, or that, or step, is saying something and it's spiritual and that's really good that it's not bad that it's spiritual but when you make it if you made that about something that you had to do to be right with God then it doesn't become spiritual it becomes legalistic and in the flesh and that's what we do as Christians a lot of times we, we make prayer something that's to make us right when it's the blood of Jesus that make us right we, we make talking about Jesus something that makes us right, and that isn't what made us right. What Jesus done on the cross, that is what made us right. We talk about Jesus because we believe that in our heart. And so, hey, I'm so free. Look what Jesus done for me, and we're not doing it because we're doing it to get right. We're doing it because we feel so much love and peace and that we feel the goodness of God. We feel his hope. We feel his peace. We feel, I am holy. I am righteous. I am sanctified. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Not because of what I've done or what I do, but because of what he did once and for all. It all comes down to his goodness. In Hebrew, it's a word called hesed. And um, rabbis talk about how the hesed is the very foundation. Every, love comes from hesed. Hesed is, is the goodness of God. It, it literally says that you deserve everything, every good thing. You, not only do you, do you deserve it, but I want you to have it. And so, so when it, in Romans 2, when he's say, saying that it's the goodness of God, that leads us to repentance. What does repentance mean? It means to, to turn around, to, to change our mind. It's, it's his goodness, him saying, you know what? I want you to have everything. That's his peace that we're shod with. That's what peace means, everything. I want you to have 
everything. And that's pretty cool. There, when, when you go from a different word of kindness, you, it, it's like grito or grulo or something like that. I always think of a grulo horse when I, when I hear him say it, but it's judgment. Right? And judgment means you only get what you deserve. If you do good, then you're going to get good. But if you do bad, it's what you're going to get. You're going to get, get, get beat. That sounds kind of like the finished work and religion. Now in this world, we've got to walk with a little judgment, right? Whoa, I've got to judge how far I can walk to that door. Right? I'm going to stop before I get into a closed doors. Right? There is good judgment, but that judgment is not what saved me. What saved me was Jesus and his finished work. So that means that you got love and you got judgment, but out, out of kindness comes love. And love simply means this. It's something that you make important. And some things you make more important than other things. That means you love it more than something else. It's not just a, a, a feeling and an emotion. It does become a feeling and emotion, but love's a decision. Are you more important than this other thing? And on the other end, hate. You, in order to hate something, you have had to have loved it first. Because if you didn't love it first, then you wouldn't have no emotion towards it or no connection. It just wouldn't matter. Right? Is there something like you don't even know nothing about? Like, and you don't even care. Like, you have no opinion about it. You know why? Because you don't love it, nor do you hate it. Right? So everything stems from God's hassid, from from his hasid from his goodness, from his kindness, comes his love. And his love simply, this is more important. Now, there's certain things that I love more. Jesus said, said this, it said this he, it's called the Shema in Hebrew, right? But Jesus, we call it the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. But Jesus said, said if you do this, and he, he told them what to do. He said, if you do this, watch this. He said, this is, you kept all the commandments. If you love the Lord with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. You've kept every commandment there is to keep. Whew. That cuts it down. Right? He's talking about loving, and he's talking about walking in love, not because we're trying to, to love, but because he is love. He loved us so much that he made us a priority. He made us more important than himself. And he gave his life on the cross. It's pretty powerful when you think about it. He didn't have to. And he said this, For God so loved some of the people that would finally get it right, for God so loved the Christians, for God so loved the Jews, for God so loved the Americans, we're America, right? For God so loved the, the, the what? Are you guys sure you didn't put that in the Bible like I put my horse in the Bible? For God so loved what? For God so loved what? That he did what? He gave his only begotten son. Do you know what? Love means what? You make it important. That means that he made you more important than Jesus. That means that Jesus, he wasn't just telling you something. He isn't saying, hey, this is something I'm going to tell you. This is what you do. I'm going to live it out in front of you. I'm going to show you how to do this, right? I'm going to make you more important than myself. And I'm going to give my life on the cross so that you can have my life. 
I want you to, I want you to, to live in me. I want you to know me. I want you to, to, to allow me to live in you and you can be in me and there's no resistance. There's no separation. We are one. It's like two, two, you ever see like two raindrops? And they're like separated and then you shake something and they come together. Because there's a little tension in there. When that tension leaves, what's happened? They become one and it just flows. He's like, I want to be one with you. You're more important to me than me. I talk about valuable God doesn't look at that rotten sinner. God's mad at him. Yeah, he's so mad that he says, you're more important than me. I'm going to die for you. I'm going to give my life for you so that you can have life, so that you can have hope, so that you can have peace, so that you can have access to the Father just like I do. That's pretty powerful. The thing is, is anything, says, if it means, says that we love, which means to make more important, we make more important the Lord our God. We make more important our neighbor and ourselves. If you don't think you're valuable and you don't think you're important, you're going to live out of the wrong identity. And when you live out the wrong identity, you're going to do the wrong actions. Because we don't, we, we, out of abundance of the heart, a man thinks. If you don't think you're valuable. You don't think you don't have no hope. You don't think you're good. You know what you're going to do? You're going to live out of that. That's the actions. Right doing does not create right behavior. Right believing produces righteousness because you're going to work out of that righteousness. Then you're going to love other people. Now, there's certain people that are more important than others. So that means like I'm going to put more importance on, on God and my wife than I am a stranger walking down the street. Right? But at the same time, I'm going to love the stranger when I can too. That's what Jesus was. He loved everybody. The Rabbi Freeman does. He's like, I just love everybody. He can hang out with Catholics and evangelicals. And evangelicals come to the synagogue and they're like, we love coming and listening to you. And, he, and they're like, yeah, because we only got one problem. He goes, what's that? He goes, we're evangel evangelical Christians. And he goes, that's no problem. Come on. Do you feel loved? Do you feel God's peace? Do you feel his hope? Do you know your feet are shod with the gospel of Christ? It says in Romans 8, 1, therefore there is now. When? Now. Let me ask you a question. What does now mean? Are you sure? There is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, right? Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit of life set me free from what? The law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do in that it was weakened by the sinful nature God did by sending his own son in, in the likeness of sinful man to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in sinful man. It doesn't say he contend, condemned sinful man because if he condemned sinful man, they already gone. He's like, I ain't got a problem with sinful man. I got a problem with sin. And guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to do away. And really, the sin is a sin consciousness that we face right now. Jesus already took care of the problem. He already condemned sin in sinful man. He already made a way so that we can live in his righteousness. We can live in his peace. We can live in his hope. We can walk with our feet shod with the preparation 
of peace. We can trust his kindness and know that, that, that like, like, another thing I love, I love Rabbi, he's so funny. He, he's like, like, my son come to me and he's like, I, I want an ice cream cone. He goes, I give him the ice cream cone. It's like, why? Because of, of my hasid. It's like God's hasid. It's, I believe he should have everything. So he comes back and goes, can I have another, can I have another ice cream cone? He goes, sure, here, here's another one. Can I have another ice cream cone? He goes, sure, here's another one. It's like, he's going to get tired of eating it. He'll either make himself sick and not eat that many again. But I believe he should have everything. And Jesus said, if we, if, if we being evil love to give good things to our children, how much more will our Father in heaven? It's his hesed. It's his goodness. It's his kindness that leads us to repentance. It's not the religious browbeating that says, you rotten sinner, you're going to hell. It's Jesus died for sin in sinful man. And because of that, you are free. And whom the Son sets free is free indeed. And they're like, yes, I believe that. Thank you, Jesus. And now what do we do? Come, come a shewer. You're a spiritual farrier. You just shod their feet with the gospel of peace, of nothing missing, nothing broken, and you gave them a hope that you can't buy, you can't earn, you can't get from anybody else because you already got it. Just got to receive it. He ain't going to make you. That's your choice. You're watching, you're like, I've... I've uh, I'd really like that. Good, you got that. All you got to do is believe. Believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus died for you. He paid for your sins while you were yet a sinner so that you can live for him. He loves you so much. Give him a shot. Tried everything else. Give him a shot. Watch what he will do. Amen? Amen? So, Father, we just thank you. We give you the praise, and we just ask for, for comfort and peace and for your goodness to flow through in, in each and every one of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening. If you'd like to learn more about us, check out our website at www.silverlakebaptist.org.